A founder of the Wallaha Cartel will serve the remainder of his 40 year sentence. I was gonna say bid. In an upscale home in Valle Escondido, Mexico, where the average house goes for a half a mil and up to two million dollars. Let's get into this video. Drugs, money, mansions, and private jets. A myth is being created around the narco culture. Narco culture has gone mainstream and can be seen in various areas like music, religion, soap operas, fashion, and language. But it's not all the pretty roses people like to see. Join me as I tell you the truth behind cartel life. This is narco culture. Hey, what's up guys? My name is JC. I am Ron Strong. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe. Hit that bell so you don't miss nothing. If you're part of my team, mi familia, mi raza, mi pandilla, suente la suburban, we about to take a ride. What's up guys, welcome to another episode of Cartel Life, brought to you by JC from Wrong and Strong. If you guys are new to my channel, my name is JC. I grew up on the south side of Chicago, but I started working for a family in Mexico at the age of 16. Spent my life in and out of prison in Mexico, in the States, federal, I mean, everything. Drug addiction, my life was straight chaos. Today, I run my online fitness training, branded myself from wrong to strong. The former cartel boss has already served 31 years for the murder and kidnapping of DA agent Enrique Camarena. He is a veteran and pioneer of smuggling into the U.S. He been He had been doing it way before a lot of people were doing it. He's one of the old dogs in the game. And like I said, we're gonna be following all these stories into Narcos 3, pretty much to kind of explain a little bit of the characters, the people that, there's some people that really weren't highlighted in there and not gonna be highlighted, so we're going through every single one. Yes, sir. He has gone from a dark, damp prison cell to a luxury home in Mexico. You know, after the killing of that agent, it was pretty much not the end. Well, yeah, the end of the Guadalajara cartel. You know, the cartel leaders fled. The remaining groups established, you know, their bases uh, throughout Mexico. And that's what you're seeing right now in Narcos 3. The Arellano Felix brothers took Tijuana. The Carrillo Fuentes family, Ciudad Juarez. El Chapo, Sinaloa. Time that everybody was splitting up and doing their own thing. Don Neto, Caro Quintero, and Felix was still running the game from inside prison. Don Neto has moved into his new luxury home. Compared to Puente Grande Max Prison, I would say I would be pretty happy. No one knows how old he really is because he's maintained a very low profile. The DEA thinks that he was born August 1st, 1942. There's other records that show him to be older. Who knows? Like I said, he was old school. He is old school. The U.S. had already indicted him back in 1982 for money laundering in San Diego. A lot of these cats back in the day were opening up businesses close to the border so they could be back and forth. San Diego, Texas, Arizona. They were setting up their laundry mats, cleaning the money. But he managed to flee back before the U.S. could make his move on him and he got back to Mexico. Don Neto's new home is gated. It has 24-hour security. Four federal police officers guard the door and there's cameras to watch his every move, they say. The government said it did everything it could to keep Donetto in prison, but the judge decided otherwise. And you might ask yourself, why didn't the US extradite him? Why didn't they extradite Felix? Why didn't they extradite? You have to really look in, you know, in between the lines on this and see that at the end of the day, these guys had a lot of government connections, a lot of money. We're still seen as outsiders. We're still seen as Americans. We're still, even though I was pretty much raised in Mexico, I was still seen as an outsider. I was still seen as a Chicano, a Pocho, you know, uh, being born in, in the United States. And they feel that, uh, yeah, that we're not Mexican pretty much. So they, um, Mexicans are gonna back up Mexicans. That's what pretty much I'm trying to say. And that's why a lot of these guys didn't get extradited. They were big power guys, man. They had a lot of friends, a lot of friends in the government, a lot of friends in the big house. And it, you know, it all leads back to, even though he got out, he's, let's just say he's 72, 82, he got out. He spent 
31 years in prison. So he came out a very old man. Now, if that's worth to you, or, or let me rephrase that. Let me say this. If I gave, if I offered you $2 million to do 30 years or 40, would you take it? Please leave a comment. Tell me yes or no. Honestly, the old me, the old me would have done it because I would feel that my family would be set up for the rest of their lives and they wouldn't have to do anything. I would, I would commit. I would do the ultimate sacrifice. That's how I would look at it. But people don't realize that money is not everything. It's not. You just took your whole time away of spending with your family, your loved ones, having a life. You know, my biggest, biggest regret from all the time that I did in prison is that I didn't get to be around my daughters. I came home and my daughters were, were grown women, 22, 21. Love the, the understand it's not there. Like they, they, feel, they felt like I cheated them out of a relationship with me. And now, you know, now it's, it's starting to get better. It's, it's getting better, but it's because I'm starting to realize and, and I'm, I'm growing, I'm growing, becoming a better person every day that that's why I, I take the time to, to call my daughter at least once a week or I text her or just something because I'm not going to lie. I didn't know how to be a dad when I came home. All I, all I knew how to be was sellies with somebody. Go set rutina, go work out, go eat, walk as a group, come back. Like I, I, I honestly, I thought for a long time that I was gonna be institutionalized for the rest of my life, but nah, nah, nah. Life's too short, too beautiful, and I won't. I got asked a question on my last video that I guess I was pronouncing something wrong. The reason why I speak like this is because my jaw was completely broken off in front. Here, see that? Completely bone was sticking out and it's not, it doesn't work as it used to. So I slur words or my tongue rubs it. I bite my cheeks all the time. You know, it was a, it was a war wound. I got lots of them on me, lots of war wounds. So yeah, that's why I talk like that. <laughs> Look at guys, at the end of the day, man, I try to share these stories because they connect with my story and everything that I've been through, the pain, the suffering, the drugs, the gangs, the, the manipulation, the backstabbing, the murders, all these things connect into my story and I lost 17 years of my life for no reason that I'll never get back, or well, it was for a reason, but you know what I mean. I'll never get them back. My kids grew up. You know, they don't need me no more. My oldest daughter just got her own apartment. Like, it's, it's sad, but it's one of those pains that I'm gonna have to live with for the rest of my life. And all I have to do is just keep getting better, keep, you know, working. And let me tell you something, dreams do come true. You just have to work at it. You can't expect it for it to land on your lap. You have to work for it. The acting classes that I started taking a couple months back, they're paying off now. Now I have to do all the headshots and, and, and all this stuff and the time that I spend on these videos, the reason why I make them short is because everybody's busy. Nobody wants to sit and watch a half an hour or something or an hour, unless it's my narco stuff. <laughs> but you get what I mean? Stop wasting so much time and start bettering yourself. Small wins, small wins, that's all you need. Start by reading a book. Start by going to the gym. Start by watching what you eat. Start by not swearing as much. You see, I, I, haven't, I haven't been as bad as I used to be. But start with small stuff so that way you start to win. But I don't know nothing, man. My name's JC, I am Ron the Strong. Hey, don't judge nobody, stay in your lane, live savage, and remember, you have one life to live, but if you live it right, one life is all you need. Stay out of jail, don't do drugs, stay in school, don't trust nobody, except God. I love you guys. Be wrong strong.